Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionellos, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our rheumatology playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the synthetic DMARDs. Today, we'll talk about the biological DMARDs. We divide them into two subtypes, TNF inhibitors and non-TNF inhibitors. With that being said, now let's get started. Please make sure to watch the videos in this playlist in order. As you know, rheumatoid arthritis, you have the pain and swelling because it's systemic inflammatory autoimmune arthritis. The joint pain improves with use. It's symmetrical and there is elevation of ESR or CRP or any acute phase reactant. Rheumatoid is inflammatory. It's also autoimmune. Therefore, it affects small joints commoner in females because it's autoimmune. Chronic disease with acute flares. Joint float analysis will give you white blood cells greater than 2,000 but less than 100,000. There is prolonged morning stiffness for more than one hour. Contrast that with osteoarthritis. The morning stiffness was less than 30 minutes. Now, why is that? Because with a non-inflammatory arthritis, pain predominates but with an inflammatory arthritis stiffness predominates also clinically speaking we have symptoms complications and associations of rheumatoid we have talked about all of this before in this playlist Treatment of rheumatoid is medical or surgical. Surgical is last resort. Medical, non-steroidals. Steroidals are here with the immunosuppressants. And then the DMARD. Synthetic DMARDs, which we have discussed in the previous video. And biological DMARDs, which is today's topic. Biological DMARDs are divided into TNF and non-TNF inhibitors. Please note, do combine more than one medication together. You combine a non-steroidal with a synthetic DMARD. That's fine, but never combine more than one biological DMARD together at the same time. For instance, do not give infliximab and adalimumab at the same time. This is just wrong, folks. Stop it. Why not, medicosis? Because now the risk outweighs the benefits. What do you mean? The risk of infection is greater than the benefit of actually treating the rheumatoid better. Once you confirm the diagnosis, you start the DMARDs right away. Never combine more than one biological DMARDs. When you give biological DMARDs, this can cause infections. It increases your risk of infections. Absolutely. Why? Because they destroy your TNF. They destroy your immune system. So you have increased risk of infections. This, is, this can happen in some patients. If it happens, you stop the DMARDs temporarily. A more accurate technical term is called you pause it and then you will come back when the infection has been treated. So we have non-steroidals, we have DMARDs, and then we have the immunosuppressants. Here we have only the synthetic DMARDs and the immunosuppressants. These are the synthetic DMARDs all the way up to here. Even tofacitinib is a synthetic DMARD. The immunosuppressants are here. They include azathioprine, cyclosporin A, cyclophosphamide, and mycophenolate mofetil. Who named these things? If you want to know what all of this mean, please watch the previous video. Do not forget I made a typo where I explained the azathioprine as if it's a synthetic DMARD. It's not. Azathioprine is an immunosuppressant, not a synthetic DMARD. It doesn't matter that much, but I want to be super sophisticated to the point of being stupid. For mild rheumatoid, you give hydroxychloroquine. For moderate to severe rheumatoid, you give methotrexate. This is true in the United States. In Europe, they prefer sulfasalazine, as we have discussed before. So, we're done with non-steroidals. We are done with the synthetic DMARDs. Now, let's talk about the biological DMARDs. Why do we call them biological DMARDs? Are you talking about biological warfare? No, 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 no. Hold your horses. No, no. Don't be. Just try to be more subtle. They are derived from cell proteins. That's why we call them biological. That's it. And then it's divided into TNF and non-TNF. DMARDs are synthetic or biological. Biological are either anti-TNF, also known as TNF inhibitors. This small i always remind me of mathematics. Non-TNF inhibitors. So the TNF inhibitors include infliximab, adalimumab, sertolizumab, golimumab, my goodness, who named these things, and etanercept. All of these four are on one group, in one group, and etanercept stands alone. Why? I'll tell you later. Hold your horses. Non-TNF inhibitors include abatacept, tocilizumab, rituximab, anakinra. 
Today we will discuss these. We shall talk about those in the next video. Okay, we have the biological DMARDs and now we're talking about the TNF inhibitors. All right. Infleximab, adalimumab, sirtulizumab, gulimumab. I have a great mnemonic about infleximab coming up in a later video, so please subscribe. What is the mechanism of action? Monoclonal antibodies, because they end in MAB, that bind to and inhibit the soluble TNF. What is TNF? TNF is a freaking protein. It's a cytokine, a tumor necrosis factor that's floating in the plasma. It's floating there. And then when you inject the infleximab, this drug will go to the TNF, bind it and inhibit it. It inactivates the TNF, rendering it useless. Why do we care about the TNF that much? Because TNF is a cytokine produced by the macrophages and it's an inflammatory mediator in rheumatoid arthritis. If you can successfully bind it and inhibit it, you will decrease the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Well done! Not only for rheumatoid arthritis, you can also use it for inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, and AS in this context stands for ankylosing spondylitis, not aortic stenosis. Get your head out of your aortic sphincter. Note, if you want to treat rheumatoid arthritis, you can combine TNF DMR, such as infliximab, with methotrexate, which is a synthetic DMR. It's okay to combine a synthetic with a biological, but do not combine two biologicals together. Side effects of all of these four, infections such as reactivation of TB, big time, and varicella zoster virus, also known as shingles. Shingles in adults, chicken pox in children. Drug-induced lupus, by the way, do not say this is drug, this is oral, no, 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 I just mean drug-induced lupus. And here is drug-induced lupus. Whenever you, there is drug-induced lupus, you will see what kind of antibodies in the serum, antihistone antibodies. Infusion reaction at the injection site. When you inject at the skin site, you get some reaction. CNS demyelination, let's destroy the myelin sheath. And worsening of the CHF. So do not give infliximab to a patient with NYHA CHF class 3 or 4. It was thought that infliximab can increase your risk of lymphoma, but a recent study has debunked this notion. However, they can increase your risk of non-melanomatous skin cancer. What do you mean? Any skin cancer other than melanoma, such as basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. You can give a combo, but this combo has a very serious side effect. If you give TNF inhibitors such as infliximab with the immunosuppressant azathioprine, you can increase the risk of lymphoma. This is still true. All right, we are done with these four. Now let's talk about etanercept. It has recept because it's a receptor. Etanercept, it's not a monoclonal antibody. It does not end in MAB. It's a receptor, it's called etanercept, it's a decoy receptor for TNF. What the flip does that mean? It means it acts as a sponge. Imagine that this is the etanercept. Imagine that etanercept is like a Pac-Man or a receptor. This receptor is like a sponge. It's engulfing all of these TNF molecules and removing them from the serum. It's like a freaking vacuum cleaner. Other than that, everything is almost the same as infleximab, adalimumab, etc. Some people argue that you get less risk of infection with etanercept. Now, this slide is the apotheosis of medicosis. Please remember this, please. And the synthetic DMARDs, I want you to write the synthetic DMARDs here. Just for training, you have the methotrexate, you have the sulfasalazine, you have the hydroxychloroquine, and you have the leaf that comes in front of the pyramid called the flunamide. And don't forget the small molecule inhibitor, tofacitinib. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and click on the join button. Follow me on all of these platforms. Support the channel on Patreon or PayPal. Here is my email. Here is my website. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.